the pandemic in Brazil hit uh, the country really hard, and most of the uh, traditional commerce had to close their stores. Uh, but since uh, for Magalu specifically, uh, we we actually did really well because we started e-commerce very early in Brazil in 2000. I I, I started the business 21 years ago, the e-commerce mm. part of the business, and uh, we managed to to grow 60 percent even with all the stores closed uh, last year. It was still growing uh, uh, a lot this year. Uh, but uh, I, as a Brazilian citizen. Uh, and, and, and seeing so many other businesses that uh, don't doing well, uh, it was really a, a tough time. Uh, even though we are we're doing well uh, at Magalu, so seeing my colleagues, business colleagues, some of them not with the relevant digital uh, channel as we had, uh, not doing well was a tough time. And I also I was also very worried about our own employees. So there, health issues. You mentioned that you started this business over two decades ago. You must have faced a lot of skepticism when you first launched this. How did you overcome that? We had skepticism, not only for starting early, but for starting differently, because we were already a traditional retailer and we decided to build our only channel uh, uh, model. So I launched the e-commerce on top of the traditional retailer platform. So uh, I used the same distribution center, the same systems and uh, Investors and even like the, uh, the, the the community as a whole was skeptical about our approach of like bundling everything together. Nobody thought that traditional retailer <laughs> would be a relevant for us in e-commerce, but I think uh, we, we we stuck to our approach with all the complexities, all the uh, hurdles of Brazil, and currently it paid off. Currently we are uh, a market leader in e-commerce. We are the leader of formal e-commerce in Brazil. And the only one doing commerce in Brazil profitably. So right. it, it really paid off to keep uh, our uh, omnichannel strategy. So was your family on board with this strategy from the get-go? What are some of the lessons that you took away from your family's business empire? One thing that I love about my family is that they always put their business first. So, uh, and, uh, and, and a very interesting fact about Magalu is that uh, we were founded by, uh, by, uh, by and uh, led by women for like 40 years. Right. So, uh, yes, it's a, it's, it's, it's a very atypical for a Latin American company. And I think we have this like kind of open-minded feminist soul in the company. Uh, so, so they are really open. Uh, they think of outside the box. They are, they are not stuck with the past. So uh, we, we have very strong values and uh, I, I haven't changed those. But in terms of changing business model and, uh, and, and this, in, in the channels and the way we operate, uh, we say here in Magalu that uh, what never changes is that we are always changing. And they hmm. really supported me. I, I never had any issue uh, with the board uh, and, uh, and, uh, and they supported me because they know the uh, e-commerce and the digital revolution would be a mayor would have a mayor impact in uh, retailing not only in brazil but overall so, so your mother is a key figure not only in magalu but also in brazil's business community right so uh, what's the dynamic there do you often agree disagree we have like a, a, a open confront culture so we, we like <laughs> to confront each other uh, we, we don't like to 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 put disagreement uh we, we like to to to, to have uh, a, a transparent discussions, uh, and she's very uh, tough. She wants the business to 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 thrive. Uh, mm. She wants us to think uh, always outside the box. It's really like a regular uh, kind of relationship between boss, because she's currently my boss. She's currently uh, the chairwoman of the company. I'm the CEO of the company. So it's a very uh, open-minded relationship, and she's very tough. She she wants results, uh, not only financial results, but she wants also the company to thrive in terms of ESG, uh, uh, several other funds. So it's a really natural re relationship. So let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you may be facing going forward. We know that Brazil has given out some generous emergency payments for the pandemic. Uh, with those getting reduced now that we're entering a post-COVID era, is that going to affect Magalu? No, we are macro-proof in the sense that our uh, business depends on the growth of e-commerce in Brazil. So when you look at uh, e-commerce in Brazil, even after... Uh, the COVID crisis is only 10% of overall retail. It's a 1 trillion, 200 billion 
uh, retail market in Brazil, and only 10% it's online. The e-commerce in Brazil, we grow no matter what. So are you happy right now with your logistics capacity, or are you planning to ramp up investments there? We want to increase our uh, square footage to 2 million square meters in Brazil. Uh, we have currently 800,000 square meters of distribution capabilities. So we are still investing because I, I don't want to wait. So I, I don't want to wait for a foreigner to make Brazil digital. We want to <laughs> be a Brazilian company making Brazil digital. So in this post-COVID world, the environment is changing so fast. How are you systematically future-proofing your business? We made Magalu Digital. Uh, we, we spent 20 years to make an incumbent retailer one of the uh, leaders in e-commerce in Brazil. So that was, it, and that's very hard because you don't see that in any other country. So all, all the relevant e-commerce players in other countries, they were born digital. We did that Magalu, but we haven't stopped here. So we are now using all the uh, learnings, all the software that we built to make Magalu digital to help other retailers to go digital as well. So I think we are bulletproofing our, <laughs> our business by uh, being bold and helping other businesses to grow. Future proofing will also include succession. Are you looking into uh, setting up your children for perhaps one day having to do what you're doing right now? It took me 15 years to, to uh, like working very hard on the e-commerce part uh, to go to the CEO position. So, and uh, and I and I had to prove myself like doing a, a profitable and growing business and. Uh, and when I became CEO, I became CEO because the company really wanted to do an all-in in the digital e-commerce. I, I don't know if my children will have the same uh, the same opportunity or they, they will have the same will to be working at the company. Currently, I have great executives, so I have a great bench here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, we we don't have that uh, uh, planning uh, uh, for, for succession here. So. It, it, it happens organically, naturally. Uh, it's not that very detailed succession planning that you're starting to prove, uh, 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 training your, your, your siblings to, <laughs> to do the commerce. It's a very organic approach at Magalu. And in my case, it worked very well.